Good morning. What I got to say today is I love the Lord. He's marvelous and long suffering. What I have to say today is not directed to someone that don't know Jesus. But my prayer is if you're ever in a situation like the one I, I found myself in, that you don't have to be seeking Jesus, but you need to be praising Jesus. What I have today to say today is to my brothers and sisters in Christ, those who, when the preacher talks about you, he calls you faithful. You're in church. You're doing what you're supposed to. You have your help. You're running wide open. You're continuing at church and doing things home and family. But all that can change in a very short period of time. When I was in the hospital for 11 days, I wasn't out of the body or anything like that. I was, I was in a hospital room in uh, conscious in between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning for seven days. Things would come in and, and tell me all the things I was doing for God and asking me why I was here. And the first scripture that comes to mind, I've never been one for quoting scripture, but anyway, these came to mind, and most of them were verbatim. <clears throat> John 3 and 16. This is the way it was presented to me on this side. <sighs> for God loved the world, so he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I've never heard it quoted like that before. And my response to that was, no, it's for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And the voice on this side says, well, what's the difference? It's the same word. I'm like, well, it's... It's God so loved. Love has two sides. Love is a kind, giving, nurturing side. But if you're a parent, you know that God, that, that love also has a parental and correctional side. So if God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that I might be grafted into the family, why would I think that he should spare me suffering put me back to where I was supposed to be and it's not shall not, it should not. That means you have to keep in there. <clears throat> and uh, then the next night they come in and it's like why did God let this happen to you for all you were doing for him? And I'm like this was my answer. God backhanded me and I fell flat upon a solid rock and was broken pieces <clears throat> and then the next scripture I had was uh, Matthew it said uh, it says he who falleth upon the rock shall be broken into pieces but he who the rock falleth on shall be ground into power yeah. and it just went on continuing for, for quite a while and um, he was asking me why do you hold fast to this? It's the God is in your mind and in your ways. And I'm like, Job said, Yea, though he slay me, I will trust in him. And then, and then I heard a different voice from behind. And it said three words. It is enough. And it spoke with great authority. And I had no more thoughts of anything. And, I, and another scripture came to mind, which was, Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, 
and he will flee from you. Yeah. And, yeah. and I look at this verse and saying, the devil's not fleeing from me. If I submit myself to the word of God and resist the devil, then Satan is going to flee from the God that's living through me. Yeah. And, and it if you're in service for the church and you're doing good, you're not above correction. That's right. and, and God had been speaking to me about doing different things, and I never had time because I always had to work. And I trusted in, in God to a, a certain extent. I trusted in him as long as I had the ability to make a living and ability to make money. But Easter Sunday, I had no ability for anything. The only thing I had to hold on to was to trust the Lord Jesus Christ because I had nothing else. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to dismiss Children's Church right now? Yes, amen. All our Children's Church can be dismissed. Amen. Our children's church can be dismissed. Any of our children about four to ten years old, go ahead and go back. They have a big lesson planned today. Amen. All right. Uh, now for our, our special treat we have for today. Amen. I told Brother Br Tony, can we split it up? Can I do some of this? Amen. And he allowed me to, so I thank him for that. And uh, so today uh, we have the special treat for the church. And we have some of our ladies that's going to come up. And uh, they're going to stand up here, and they're going to uh, quote us some scripture. Amen. I'm going to ask those ladies who has volunteered to do this to come on up at this time. Amen. Make your way right down here in the front. And as they're coming, I would like to say that we're all part of this body. Amen. We're part of this body, and everybody has a work to do, and we thank God for for each one. If you're in this sanctuary this morning, we thank God that you're here. Amen. But I would like to point out that these ladies uh, here are our leadership. Amen. These is our deacons' wives and, uh, of course, the pastor's wives. And, you know, to be put in leadership, you ought to have, you ought to have some kind of ability, amen, to be a leader. And uh, quoting scripture, Ought to be one of those abilities, amen. You don't have to be, uh, uh, you don't have to quote tra chapters, but you need to know scripture. So as they come, all of them come, amen. They got, you got a microphone. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait on Brother Jay to get it right. Gotta listen to your mama, Brother Jay. I think I was a teenager the last time I done this. I, I just get nervous when I get in a crowd. But I know I know this, but I might get stumped. So I guess I probably shouldn't put this paper here. But anyway, I'll try not to depend on that. But y'all pray for me. I'm gonna recite in Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the hour that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. They shall tread upon the lion and adder, the, the lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet.
Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath called my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. scriptures is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Um, all of Proverbs 3 is good, so I'm going to take it on to verse 8. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It shall be help to your navel and morrow to your bones. Amen. <laughs> Y'all that know me know that I am very nervous. Um, I had a longer one that I wanted to do, but I was afraid that I would be up here and be nervous and forget half of it. So Isaiah 40, 31 is one of my favorites. Amen. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will walk and not grow weary. They will faint. They will run and not be faint. It's a little difficult today. I lost my mother. I wish you were here. hard. She had a lot of struggles. Sickness. She raised six children. But I know where my mother is. And I am so thankful for that. And the scripture I have planned to do this morning is not the one that I decided to do. The scripture is Psalms 46 and 10. It says, Stand still and know that I am God. There's a little more to that. He says, I will be exalted in the heavens and I will be exalted on this earth. But that stand still and know that I am God just resonates with me that no matter how difficult times are, that he is with me and he is my strength. Amen. And all of God's people can say amen to that. And he, she said that he will be exalted amongst the earth. Amen. Are you ready to exalt our Savior this morning? Amen. We're ready to go into worship. Let's worship with our choir as they sing this morning and exalt the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
short life would be, what would you do? What would they say when God called you home? What would they Thank you for those great songs, and thank you for being here in the house of the Lord. It's good to see each and every one. Good to see some maybe first-time visitors. Uh, if, you, if you're right there on your pew, look to your left and right and, and give a big smile to the one sitting next to you and high-five them or wave at them or uh, if there's somebody right there next to you, it's good to see you. Let them know you're glad they're in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Leviticus chapter 24. Amen. Let's go way back that this morning. Leviticus chapter 24 on Mother's Day. Amen. Leviticus chapter 24, way back there. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Amen. Go right back there to the third book and let's turn to it and see what God has to say to us this morning. We'll begin reading in verse number 10. Leviticus 24 and verse number 10. And we'll just read six verses there and see what God has. <clears throat> I like to say again, Happy Mother's Day. And, and, and I want to quote before we begin to read the scripture. I like to quote maybe a, a, another preacher, preacher Adrian Rogers. I like to preach him and he would say these words on a Mother's Day in past. He would say that, the head of the home is the father. It's just biblical, amen. The head of the home is the father. He said, but the heart of the home is the mother, amen. And I just want to give him a big amen for that because I believe that. And I believe if you'll study your Bible, you'll find that to be correct, amen. The man ought to be the head, but the mother is definitely the heart. And if you're a wise man, you would never rebuke that, amen. Leviticus 24 
in verse number 10. The Bible would say, The son of an Israelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel. And this uh, son of the Israelitish woman uh, and the man of Israel came and strove together in the camp. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses, and his mother's name was Sheremith. His mother's name was Sheremith, the daughter of debris of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in a ward that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let the, all the congregation stone him. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him as well as a stranger as he that is born in the land when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall be put to death. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Father, we thank you today that you are allowed us to be together. God, we're here and we're assembled in such a way that we've never been before. And God, I know we'll probably never be afterwards. And so God, today I pray that your spirit will come down and bless, bless each one that's come in this building in a special way. And God, I pray for those that's visiting, God, that you'll bless them for being here. And we pray especially on this day for all of our mothers that they'll receive the blessing of God. And we pray, Lord, most of all, if there's a lost soul or one who's backslid on you, God, today you'll speak to them through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. A amen. Uh, now, I want us to look right here in verse number 10. This is kind of verse number 10 and 11 is where we want to mainly preach out of. But, but I want us to look now about something that we just read. Uh, maybe you're not familiar with this. If you're not familiar with this scripture, then that's certainly okay. Amen. It is, it is Leviticus, and it is a scripture probably. Brother Jay, I don't know if you've ever even uh, uh, come close to teaching on this one or not. Most people would probably kind of maybe skip over. I don't know. But, but I want us to look at it today, and God I believe can speak to us through it this morning. Hey, Leviticus 24 and verse 10. Uh, let's look at what it says again. It says, The son of an Israelite-ish woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel and the son of the israelite woman and a man of Israel strove together. They were fighting together. Verse 11, And the israelite woman uh, uh, son blasphemed the name of the Lord, amen, and cursed. We know that if you've been here on Wednesday nights, we talked about a blasphemy, a what, what blaspheming is uh, according, according to the Bible, and blaspheming is always a verbal thing. It said he blasphemed the Lord and cursed, and what we went on down and read, and when they heard him do that, amen, blaspheming is a verbal thing. But this man did this. I don't know what he said. I, I don't know all the, and, and no one else does, but I do know this, that he blasphemed God and God was not well pleased. And, and But we see there that his mother now, I want to look at his mother a, a Shelomith this morning. Sheremith, Shelomith if you will. It's a hard word to even say for me uh, being from uh, Horry County. But Shelomith is the word today. Amen. That's our word and that is the mother that I want to talk about Shelomith this morning. Uh, she is the only woman that's named at all in the book of Leviticus. Amen. I don't know if you know, but the Bible, uh, most of the time, women's not named. Uh, uh, there is women named in the Bible, but most of the time, their names are not mentioned a whole lot. And when you get in Leviticus, she is the only name mentioned of a woman and of a mother in the whole book. She's the daughter of Debris. Uh, he was a Danite. He was a, a, a Danite priest. Okay, they were they were separate from the uh, from the Levites uh, from the tribe of Levi. Levites they were they were different priests, but he was a priest nonetheless. And, and by name, his name Debris meant he talked a lot. So there goes a preacher that talked a lot. Amen. It's biblical. And just saying. Um, you could have laughed right there, amen. 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 So, so we, that, that's her daddy, and, and then she has a son, and his father of this son was an Egyptian. 
an Egyptian. And, and this son now is what we read about. And this son uh, got into a fight with a Hebrew man. And he cursed God. They locked him up. And they prayed about it. And God said, take him outside the city and stone him. And it was an awful way for a son of a mother to die. Amen. It was an awful way for this, for a mother's son to watch him die, to be stoned to death. They would put their hands on his head, the ones that heard him, and the whole congregation stoned this man today. But I want to say, and here's my sermon title this morning. Hey, amen. This son, though he was, uh, uh, I don't know how wicked he was. I, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, read too much into it. But I know what he did to cause him to get killed. Amen. He blasphemed God. So therefore, they were some wicked in him. The Bible would teach us that uh, Jesus' words would say, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. We read about Peter there where he would curse. Amen. There was something in his heart there that God needed to work on and get on out. Hey, let me tell, let me tell us something today. If we walk around and we got little curse words coming out now and again, hey, it's coming from our heart now. Always remember that. Amen. It's coming from, well, I was on the job and I was aggravated. Well, my wife made me upset. Said, well, I stumped my toe. You didn't hit your hammer with my, your finger with my hammer like I did. It does not matter. Be careful with our words. Amen. Be careful with our words. That's for all of us this morning. Uh, but I know that's why he would die because he blasphemed the Lord and cursed. And I want to preach this morning. If y'all help me. But Mama tried. Mama tried this morning. Mama tried. If you're over 50 years old, that might that might, title might mean a little bit more to you. Amen. But I'm going to stick with the Bible this morning. Let your mind go into the Bible that Mama tried. And I want to show us now why I say this out of this scripture about Sheremith, this mama, how she tried. Amen. I'm going to tell you how we can pick it out of these verses, not just make it up, but pick it out of these verses how she tried. Amen. We don't know a whole lot about her according to these scriptures. Not a lot, but there is some uh, adjectives uh, about Sheremith and what kind of mother she was. But I will tell you this, uh, uh, Brother Jay, we, we don't know how Peter died, but uh, we go back in history, amen, and we can read that. And we don't have no reason, to, uh, uh, it, it doesn't refute the Bible, so therefore I think it's good teaching. It's good historical. Brother Wayne stood up and gave even more history. And, and it's not Bible, but it's good to have some history with the truth of the Word of God, amen. And I want to take, I, I want to do the same thing this morning, amen, that's legal, right? I want to give us some history of what the Jewish rabbins would teach about this scripture and about this lady name, this mother name, Sheremith, what they would say about her. And if you're a Bible reader now, when you catch up with the story, say amen for me real loud, hey, because you'll catch up on this story uh, and maybe different times, people. But if you catch up on what, don't, don't amen until you catch up on it. But here's what they would say about this Bible, this, this lady in the Bible, Sheremith, Here's what they would say, the Jewish rabbins, the, the rabbis, the teachers, the Jewish teachers, what they would say. They would say, Sheremith was a very, very beautiful and virtuous woman. She was solicited and tempted every day by an Egyptian officer, but she never complied with him for she was a virtuous woman. She, he, he, and, and one night he found an opportunity to slip into her home while her husband was away and take advantage of her. Upon her husband's return, she wept and cried and told him what happened to her. At first, the husband of Sheremite says, I'm going to put her away. And then he thought, well, I love her so much and she is a virtuous woman. We'll give her time to see if she be with child. And as a few months went on, they seen that she was with child and, and it was evident that she was with child and her husband would put her away. So he went to the Egyptian officer and he, 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 he fussed with him. He argued with him with his words to this, this Hebrew did with this Egyptian officer. And that Egyptian officer would fuss back at him with his words, but then it would turn to blows. And Moses would step around the corner and hear this. And he would take the side of the Hebrew and he would kill that Egyptian and he would bury him in the sand. 
And then the story goes on to say that then the brothers of Sheremith would, would go to the, her husband and say, now that man is dead that did this thing to our sister. And you know she's a virtuous woman. And now you've got her locked up so that, like she's guilty of adultery or something. And we're not going to take this. You're going to be the husband you're supposed to be and go get her and make her back your wife and do what's right. And he says, I'm not going to do that. She's defiled. And they were arguing back and forth. And Moses came back around the corner the next day to hear them arguing and Moses says oh brothers what are we doing arguing we're both Hebrews and one looked at him and said the, 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 the father looked at him the, the husband of Sheremith and said so what you going to do kill us like you did the Egyptians And that's history of Sheremith that's history. That's the history story of Sheremith. And of course, we know the, and, and you know the rest of the story. Amen. And you know what happened from there. But I want to preach real quick, like this morning. I know it's Mother's Day, and we're going to go and celebrate this with our families. And, and, but I want to say real quick, like three things that we can see this godly woman, Sheremith, what she did that would say, we could say, that mama tried. That mama tried. Amen. Hey, though her son was uh, crucified, uh, I'm sorry, he was stoned to death. Amen. Hey, he was stoned to death. And though he was, she, had to, she had to watch her son be stoned to death, she, she can say she tried and she tried and she tried. How can I say that? Here, according to history and according to what we read in the Bible here, if you look the word Sheremith up, the name, that woman name, it means peaceful. And I want to say something. According to the history of her and according to the Bible of her and what she was named, the peaceful lady that she was, that even though she was done dirty, hey, she was still a peaceful woman. Hey, though she, hey, though she was uh, uh, taken advantage of that night and, and, and she begot with child and it was not of her doing, she still was named Sheremoth. Amen. She was still a peaceful lady. That's what I want to say this morning. Hey, you take a good godly mama that's trying to do what's right she can be done dirty and she'll still be peaceful I don't know what kind of mama you had but when they were six head of us to eat and they went but five pieces of chicken she wasn't never hungry she didn't have but two pork chops to feed the whole family so she cut them up and made meat and rice she never complained about anything. She didn't have to have. She, didn't, she was always peaceful, even though sometimes a mama would we'd make her do everything. We'd put all our problems on her. Daddy wouldn't do Hey, look, and, and mama would still be peaceful. Huh? That's showing that mama's trying. Mama's trying. Hey, hey it's all through the Bible now. And I, I wish I had time this morning. I could tell you about a bunch of mamas who was just done dirty. And they still remain peaceful. Hey, we'll just take it. Okay, I'll just give you one this morning. Hey, what about Hannah, huh? Hey, she, mm, hey, she'd go in there. And every year she was antagonized. And she was picked on. And she was just done dirty. And all she would do is just go to the halter and cry out to God for a son. Hey, she just stayed peaceful. Huh? A good godly mother. That tries is a peaceful lady. She, uh, that's what we read about Sheremoth. Hey, Sheremoth, let that be a word for you today. Sheremoth, hey, she was peaceful. She was peaceful. Now look what it says. It says, the son of an Israelitish woman. Only place in the whole Bible this word's used. And it's used three times as an adjective to Sheremoth. Hey, she was an Israelitish woman. Here's what it says. The son of an Israelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian. Didn't say her husband was an Egyptian. Y'all know historical account. We just, but the father was the Egyptian. And I was thinking about this thing. Hey, look, this Mother's Day, amen. Fathers, just brace yourself real good. She was done dirty, and her name was still Sheremith. She was still peaceful. And she had a deadbeat daddy. But she still remained Israelitish. Huh? Israelitish. Hey, Israelites is God people. Amen. Hey, hey, when the daddy was a deadbeat, when the, hey, look, if at best you say, well, what, do you, what makes him that? Well, he was an Egyptian. Amen. Anytime in the Bible you read Egyptian, it means sin, it means the world, it means the, the flesh. Hey, and at best this Egyptian daddy was worldly. He didn't care about the things of God. He just wanted what he wanted, but it didn't change the fact that God said Sheremite was an Israelitish. She was Israelitish. She was Israelitish. 
hey, she stuck with the things of God. Even though the husband was zero. Huh? Hey, that's a mama who's trying now is what I'm trying to say. That's a mama who's trying even though the daddy's no good. Mama's trying. Mama's trying. Amen? Huh? Hey, daddies. I'm trying to move on, bro, Billy. <laughs> hey, daddies. What, what, call, what, I know the world calls deadbeat daddies the ones that don't take care of the babies, right? But I want to say a deadbeat daddy this morning would be a man who don't lead his family spiritual. Amen. Don't teach them the ways of God. That's all I got. Hey, I, ain't got, I don't elaborate it on because it's Mother's Day. But I'm telling you, Daddy, make sure you're the daddy God called you to be. Uh, who, who prayed you to be. Be a good father. Amen. Be a good, good father. But even if a daddy's no good, a mama that tries is one who, who God would say, Israelite-ish. Amen. No other, no other woman God said that about. She was Israelite-ish. She cared about the things of God. And I want to end with this. Though she was peaceful when she was done dirty. And though she was Israelitish when the daddy was deadbeat. Her goodness and her peacefulness and her, her godliness. Hey, did not determine her son's deliverance. Just because mama tried, don't mean the children's going to make it. Thank God for godly mamas. If you got a mama that's always riding you about doing the things of God, you ought, you ought to praise the Lord about it. I was going to show a video that I seen that about a boy that says you, it's called helicopter mom. Nobody wants a helicopter mom. So you ain't got her anymore. Just because mama's a godly mama don't mean the boy's going to make it in. Doesn't determine his deliverance. And as I was looking at this scripture this week and I was, I was praying and I was studying, I said, God, we don't know a whole lot about Sheremy, but we know more about her than we do the son. We know he cursed God and died, got stoned. That's all we know. What, what is, why did you record this? Well, because of what he did, a new law come into effect. And it would say, we read part of it, that since he done this, that anybody that does this will be stoned. It doesn't matter who they are, if they're part of the congregation, if they're part of the Israelites, or if they're just a stranger in the land. Hey, they're going to be stoned. Hey, can I say something this morning? We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So we would have to, we would have to say this law would apply to us. If we done this thing, then we would have to die. And this man here, this, this, this man, he, 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 was, he, he blasphemed against God, so they took him outside the camp, and they laid their hands on him, and the whole congregation stoned him because of his sin then this new law was made because of this. And all the congregation, even strangers, would be put to death. And Mama, Sheremiah, had to watch him be stoned to death and die. Why? Because he blasphemed. Because of his words, he would die. And maybe she cried at that stoning, Sheremiah. I tried. I tried as they were stoning him to death. And no doubt she probably tried to get him off. Tried to, I don't know, I, I'm, I know how mamas are. And she tried everything she could for him not to be stoned. But the son here in this story reminds me of another son. It reminds me of another son that had a mother that loved him. Hey, and she would be the mother, hey, that we all know in the Bible. And it reminds me, this son, even this wicked son, hey, listen to me now, is a type and a shadow of Jesus Christ. Uh, how can you say that, preacher? How can you say that? Hey, because it says in the Bible that they would put their hands on the Jesus Christ, this Son of God. And they took him outside of the city where they would yell, crucify, crucify, 
You crucify, hey, who yelled that? All the congregation would yell that. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone into his own way. And the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Hey, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Hey. They would take him outside. They laid their hands on him. Hey, and they, would, and, they would, and they would crucify him. And they would all watch as he died. And because, and, and you know why they did it? Because the words he spake. And they said it was blasphemy. Because he said he was the son of God. They accused him of blasphemy. And they took him outside and they stoned him to death. And because of this son being put to death, there's a new law, if you will. <laughs> huh? Hey, there's a new promise is what we like to call it. Amen. Hey, and if we'll believe on that son who crucified outside the city, hey, if we'll believe on him, then us, ourselves, amen, the ones that are really, truly guilty can be set free this morning. Hey, because what the son did... Mama would also watch. And though we may put it in an Easter play, though they make a big Hollywood movie and, and put her down there trying to stop it, when it comes to stopping him from being killed, you'll never read in the Bible that his mama tried. You'll never read it. Mary never tried to stop it because she knew what he was born for. Huh? Don't, don't think it didn't hurt her. Don't think she didn't cry. Don't think, but all that that we did, her, her grabbing the Roman soldiers, it's not in the Bible. She never tried to stop it. And aren't you glad today? <laughs> Mama's tries, but Mary never tried to stop the death of her son. And for that this morning, amen, we can be set free right here on Mother's Day in the house of God. If you're lost, if you're just here with Mama, if you're not where you need to be with God, Mama never tried to stop it, but Mama's tried to raise you right. Why don't you this morning say, Mama, I'm going to give you the best Mother's Day present ever. I'm going to give my life unto the Lord this morning. As we come and get us a song of invitation this morning, whatever's on your heart, uh, come and get us a song of invitation. Mama tried, and I'm glad this morning that Mary never tried to stop the death of her son. As we all stand all over the house of the Lord this morning, Mama tried. As they sing this song this morning, it's an invitation. If you'd like to come and receive this son, hey, there's a promise in effect now since the death of that son, the one they accused of blasphemy, Hey, the ones that they said his words would take him. Hey, are you the son of God? He said, thou hast said, amen. And they said, that's blasphemy. But what he was telling them was.